After the, the game with Wazoo, we decided to uh, give them the night off, sleep in your bed, uh, and then we do have an hour period here where no one has classes, so we thought it'd be a perfect time. Yeah, we're waiting for a Twitter message right now. Just waiting for the uh, text message or the Twitter thing, I guess, from uh, the Kennel Club so that I can find out where I'm supposed to go so I can be first in line. We've been, I don't think we've been any lower than tent six in the four years I've been here. Uh, we sign up and then we can go get our tent and everything. We only need one person and it's 12.15, so. It's fun, it's just a nice community, nice little get people pumped up for the game and then go from there. Come on. It's crazy they make you do this. It's kind of cool though, right? I mean, you know, after being in tent one and two. So at 1215, we just said, check the, check the site, we'll post the location. Whatever order you show up, that's what tent order you get. We thought most fair, you know, lets everyone have a fair chance at getting tent number one. We got a class at uh, 1205 and started being followed immediately. This is the whole story that happened. I was I was waiting in Crosby, right? And uh, I was on the phone with Kenny. I called him around like 1213 or so. And I was like, hey, you got to give me the Twitter update, right? Because we're on the same team. A couple people kind of try and be sneaky. And then, you know, it gets bigger until they realize they're not being sneaky. And so we were trying to duck into buildings, uh, throw, throw people off. We had about six board members that were... Uh, walking into different buildings just all over campus. And then I saw AJ, the head of Kennel Club, he walked right through Crosby and I was like, I'm gonna follow him no matter what, you know? I probably had 30 people following me, yeah. at least just by the time I got over here. So I started following him like a creeper and you know, we go outside, he's kind of waiting there talking with a smile. I think they changed the spot a couple times. It was really funny just to see. I mean, we didn't know how it was gonna work. Thought we were gonna give it a quick shot and see what happens. Everyone uh, starts following him all at once. So now he's got this huge crowd, you know, some people riding still on their bikes and we get around a uh, fully library and I see the camera crew and I'm like, okay, it, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. As soon as one person figured it out and started screaming and then everyone starts running. I just see another crew start running straight and then I don't know what they're running to. And there's bikes, scooters, people in backpacks, people in sh like athletic shorts ready to run as fast as they can and uh, that first guy that got to the bronze bulldog and slapped it and threw his finger up in there you know number one I was it's just like all right this this was a pretty cool thing that happened to just work out. Hey hey I got it we're number one and then they ran right to the Bulldog, and I got right behind some guy's backpack and got number two and started yelling number two. So AJ Hostack, it's good stuff, it's good stuff. Okay, nine's gonna be right here. 10, 11, no, number 12, not bad, huh, man? It's awesome to get to sit out here with my friends and get in line for the game. Where are the stakes? You get to know a lot of the upper classmen around here and just basically make a ton of new friends and camp out in the cold with new people. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be okay. Wait, what happened to the door? This is something that I feel like is you have to do as a Gonzaga student at some point during your four years here. Why is the door on the side? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll probably end up doing it all four years just because I don't mind camping out in the cold. Slowly but surely. Oh, this is the hard part. I'm trying to put this together. <laughs> the ground is frozen. It's straight frozen. Uh, we have seven. It's six girls and me. So uh, no comment on that. But um, you know, I guess I'm the lucky one here. Do we have the middle lock thing? I'm a freshman. This is my first huge oh. game at the McCarthy Center. So I want a prime seat. Okay. So we need to set up our tents. Okay. Bye. Hotel and a package. Oh, this is gonna fit. Yes! Uh, see, that's good. That's good. We're here. <laughs> Front row tickets. Because you were sitting in line or because you made, you took that time out, like that's what makes you a great Zag fan. And that's what I think overall makes Gonzaga and the atmosphere here just so strong and uh, kind of it continues on every year because we are so rooted in those traditions where we know like it's a big game. We're going to camp outside because we love our Zags that much. I've been camping since Saturday night, so it's a little, starting to catch up with me. Voice is gone. Ready for another game.
I'm bringing my 14 mask. degrees? <laughs> yes. It's so warm. Yep. It gets a little cold, but uh, it's definitely worth it once you get in the gym and that whistle blows and you hear, you know, you know, the song's going, you get you get going. You know, you're not tough enough to, to do that. You just claim you're from Alaska, but uh, I don't see you camping in uh, cold weather I like got, that. I got a medium pass. <laughs> uh, for a week, and, and you know, our guys go out and, and delivered some pizzas last uh, night after practice and some hot chocolate and, and got around to see everybody and tell them how much that, that uh, meant that uh, they were out there sacrificing just to get great seats for the game. That's what makes this place so special. And, makes this home court so special. All right, Coach, and I know public service is a big part of what you're, you try to teach the guys here at Gonzaga, and, yeah. and uh, they're very involved. Uh, very much so. You know, uh, we, we uh, try to get each of them involved as a group. They have individual groups where they pick their own uh, uh, charitable organization that they, you know, whatever, are moved by or, or feel like they're attached to. And, and, uh, and throughout the year, uh, we try to do different things uh, with them, whether it's up at the cancer ward or camp good times uh, uh, out there in uh, uh, Post Falls, or sometimes we've been down to the Union Gospel Mission or uh, over to the uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, up the road, which is a fabulous uh, organization here nationally and in, in uh, Spokane. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, our guys uh, understand uh, they got a lot of people pulling for them, and, and they also understand that they, you know, they need to go out there and, and give back to the community because the community means uh, so much uh, to them. Much like they do, that you know, they care so much about the kennel club mm -hmm. and their support, and the guys that are out there camping in in 10 degree weather for a week. I mean, those kids were out there all week. It's cold out there, coach. <laughs> Let's take our final time out. When we come back, we'll talk about the week ahead on the Mark Few Show. Stay with us. I mean, they're sleeping out here, and we're we're standing out here freezing, and they're sleeping out here every night just to be in the game. So yeah, I definitely have another level of appreciation for that. Yeah, I know a ton of these people, and really, you know, appreciate what they're doing. Like, I don't know myself if I would be willing to do that. So it's pretty cool. These kids are out here doing 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 the homework in tents. Yeah, it's last night it felt about three degrees outside and they're in these tents for us so you know we just wanted to come back and you know give them a little something uh, just to show them show them that we you know think about them come back to the mark few show coach uh augustana and davidson this week um, not the the tough schedule that you've had over the last couple but that again it's college basketball and it seems like anybody can beat anybody these yeah days. i think uh the theme this week is that these are two teams that just play unbelievably hard mm -hmm. just off the charts uh, hard uh, the Augustana coach I've known for 20 years in the profession he's been a division one coach before he's best of friends with Ray Giacoletti um, and so this is an opportunity for his team to come play a you know in a big time arena against a, a big time team and then uh, they'll come in and give us great effort you know Davidson uh, 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 has just had a played a bunch of road games. I mean, uh, I think they're going to be fine once they get in conference, and they, they could inevitably end up being an NCAA tournament uh, team very easily. Extremely well coached, and just they play so hard every possession. Uh, uh, it's just a credit to uh, Coach McKillop and, and the offense that they run, even though Steph Curry's out of there, very intricate, a lot of moving parts. and guys really making uh, plays and they can really shoot the basketball uh, also so that's going to be a, a very difficult game for us and we are going to have to match both these nights you know the the intensity and the effort and the desire from uh, both Augustana and uh, Davidson uh, get out of there with W's all right ladies and gentlemen it's the Mark Few show have a great week and we'll see you next week right here